Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Suicidal Prison. Look, I like the commando stuff. Okay, I like commando. I wanna... I wanna feel comfortable, though. And commando doesn't give me that comfort that I need, that I desire. For my, uh... For my skill level with it, anyway. And, uh, with the perk level, too, you know. No. Get out of here, dude. Get out of here. Have I done two episodes today already? So I only do one. I honestly can't remember. Whether I've done uh, two or one, and this is my second or my third, this is the last one. I just, I genuinely can't remember if I've recorded another one yet. I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm saying about the Among Us, you know? I'm not, uh, it's not my, it's not my cup of tea, it's not my, I mean, it's my cup of tea, it's just, uh... I need people to understand that it might take me a few hours to drink the tea. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not good at the memory thing. The, the, the short-term memory, the long-term memory, I got it on lock. Short-term memory, I got it on, uh... It's the opposite of lock. It's not, like, just unlocked. Uh, I got it on, uh... Like, free. I don't know. I like this, but only when I'm, like, demo or... This is not very good if you're in, like, a precision class, like, commando... Gunslinger or something like that, because shooting downstairs ain't super great. It's not. It's not. It's not the best of things, honestly. But I do like coming up here because you can go. Hoppa! Hoppa! You ever been to a Greek wedding? They're fun. I uh, well, there are aspects of it that are fun. I don't like Greek weddings because I don't like weddings because there are lots of people at them. I don't like being around lots of people. Even my own family, you know? I just get overwhelmed. But uh, you go to a Greek wedding, there is a... At least one that I went to. There is definitely a uh, an aspect of some... Right... No, right... Ah, he fell a little bit earlier than I expected him to. You got... Uh, it's just the one that we need, I think, right? We just need the, the one shot and then we can one shot this dude in the face if we just get one... One headshot on one of these guys. Come on, come on. Let me, let me have it. Come on, dude. Come on. Okay, 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 okay. So it comes down. You go smack, smack. Come on, dude. Smack, 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 smack. Okay, you're gonna go smack, 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 smack. Boom, done. That's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, you just gotta get it back together. Pull it together, come on, dude. I'm tilted. Oh god, I'm dying. Just close that to get a, a brief moment of respite, if nothing else, you know? Okay, so. What were we talking about? No idea. No idea. I, it's gone. It's gone, dude. So I, uh, I've been reading a lot on Royal Road, which is an English website um, where you can write stuff. I've talked about them uh, recently. And I like them a lot because they're English. Um, but also because they just have a lot of content, which is, is also very, very cool, I think. But one of the things that is the coolest about um, them, in my opinion, is is that they're English. And I don't know, no, no, this is very... Uh, you know, xenophobic or whatever, right? Yeah, 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 whatever. Okay, I love my, I love my foreign media as well. You know, my Asian, um, uh, novels as well. Love them. Love them to death. To death, to death, to bits, okay? Love them. But, here's the thing, okay? When you're reading a, a Chinese novel, when you're reading a Korean novel, a Japanese novel, you know, you pick a... A place you read a novel. They use idioms and metaphors and you know whatever other kind of references and stuff that they have in that culture, right? And over time, you learn them, you pick up on them, right? I know a lot of uh, Chinese idioms. I know a lot of Japanese um, like pop culture references and stuff. I know a lot of this stuff because I've been reading it for a long time, and I've involved myself in it and I've researched it and I, I understand it. I'm not. Uh, but I'm not fluent, you know? Like, there's, there's still a lot of things that I don't know. And it's not, like, you know, ingrained into my brain, right? Like, it's not it's not there. So, being, uh, 
being uh, an English speaker and then reading native English content that isn't translated and uh, you know using references and idioms and, and all this kind of stuff that, that I'm not used to it's honestly really really nice we've I've been reading it and there have been a lot of references and, and stuff that perhaps you know Japanese or Chinese or whoever wouldn't understand um, but that I have because I speak English and so does the author which is really really cool it's really really cool um, either that or uh, they're doing a good job of tricking me into thinking that they're native English and uh, the translator is fantastic but I'm pretty sure it's it's native English and it's so so cool I obviously I know cuz I've, I've read you know novels before I've read books like I, uh, I have a collection of of books I like um, the Rangers Apprentice the tomorrow series Pendragon you know all really really good uh, novels like proper English books written by English authors that you can go to a bookstore and buy right um, and and obviously you know they're nice to read because they're native English but um, like these are these are proper the, 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 these these fictions on Royal Road are like proper long running English fiction with uh, you know isekai and and, and romance and, and and all of these kinds of things that I so love and it's Perfect. native English and it's so nice to have uh, and I, I just I never knew that it existed and and now that I do I'm like wow it is it is actually really really pleasing even though the writing the, the quality of the writing itself might not necessarily be better the experience as a whole is improved just because I'm uh, I'm able to speak the same language as them and and I understand the the references and the uh, you know all the idioms and, and everything right like I understand it all it's all stuff that I get just just na just naturally you know I don't have to think about it I don't have to like read the translator notes for how it works it's just it's it, I get it and uh, that's like a quality of life improvement that they just can't be understated. Um, I've also been wanting to play... This is completely not related. Um, I can't think of a segue. Okay? So no segue. We're just going right into the next bit here. I've been wanting to play Oxygen Not Included lately. Clay Entertainment. They are a uh, Vancouver-based company, I believe. Um, they made... Uh, like, Don't Starve... Oxygen not included, and, and a couple of other games. Everything they make is great, okay? Clay, you know, hit me up. We can get a sponsorship going, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, but I wanted to play Oxygen Not Included again lately, so... I'm thinking about doing that a little bit in my in my spare time as well. But I also still want to write, and I'm like, I don't know. This is the problem that I have, right? Is I, uh, I end up with uh, too many things to do and not enough time to do it all, right? Oh, jeez, what a shot. What a shot. You predicted my dodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. You're okay. Don't worry about it, dude. Hey, hey. Your problem. Um. Yeah, it's, uh... Been, it's been on my list of things to play. I want to play. I love Oxygen Not Included. It's a great game. I just I never got into it to like a huge extent. I don't know. Maybe it's a good stream game once a week kind of thing, you know? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not even like a once a week. Just whenever I want, you know? Maybe I'll stream it a little bit tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not really uh, worrying about the stream so much. What the heck? Oh, it was a stalker. It was a stalker. Making a mess of the place. Not really worrying about the quality of the stream. Not really worrying about the success of the stream. Just the YouTube. The YouTube's going great. We got a whole bunch of new stuff coming up on it. It's great, dude. I'm so excited. I don't know. I'm just. I'm in like such a good mood today. Is really what it is. Just, just such a great mood today. Everything, everything that I want to go well is going well. Everything that I don't care about is also going well. And it's like everything. It just it couldn't be better. Now, when you're when you're having a, a high like this, like I am. There's, there's bound to be something that'll take you down, right? Like, not everything can go great, right? I'm I'm expecting a future of positivity because of things that I'm doing that are exciting. 
that are going to be cool for the future, right? And, you know, probably going to end up that uh, the person I'm commissioning something from is going to scam me or something like that, you know? <laughs> or uh, maybe I show up at my grandparents' house and, uh, like, the building exploded. I don't know. Um, maybe they're out of weed at the weed store. And I can't get my weed. Maybe, maybe they make it illegal again, you know? Or, uh, you know, actually, one thing that, that could do it, that we're not going to get into too much, is um, the American election. Today is, today is November 3rd. As of the time of uh, this video going live, it is November 4th. Takes a bit of time for the mail-in votes to get there, but, um... I mean, I'll tell ya. There's one thing that could go... Uh, wrong. Break time's over. Get back that would uh, possibly impact Ball's my life. Not because of who the president is, but, um... Well, yeah, actually, that that is it. <laughs> that, is, that is exactly it. Exactly it. I don't get affected by it too much, but you know, friends get affected by it, and then Sorry. apparently the uh, well, you know, it could get delayed. But um, apparently the travel restrictions between Canada and America get lifted on the 21st. Could get extended, and part of me does hope it does. You know, part of me does hope that it does get extended um, because, like, we're still like COVID's still there. We're not we're not in the clear yet, right? We're we got we got a ways to go still, so uh, you know we got uh, we got we got some time left um, before we can we can really open things up nicely like that. But uh, regardless, kind of the open up on the twenty first. So that can be kind of cool if uh, if they do. Again, it's it's like, do I want it to be opened up? No. I have I have friends in America who who want to move into Canada, and I'm like, you know. I want you to be able to do what you want to be happy with. I I don't want everybody else <laughs> to also move into Canada. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I don't want COVID up here so much, okay? Okay? You understand? You feel me? You feel me? I don't want COVID up here so much. That's kind of what comes with it once those borders get opened for recreation, you know? A whole lot of people flooding up to Canada. It would be a lot, I think. I think I think uh, I think that there are a surprising amount of people living in America right now, who uh, the only reason they aren't moving is is because of uh, of COVID. Now, also one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why they want to move in the first place is also COVID. You know, so it's it's kind of like. Uh, Catch-22? Is that it? I don't know. I never know these things. But, uh, you know, with, without COVID, they would be able to move, but then without COVID, they wouldn't necessarily have the same degree of motivation to move. <laughs> but, uh, regardless, regardless. Kind of the open up on the 21st. I expect, um, I expect another delay. Another postponing of it. Like I said, we're not, we're not done with COVID yet, you know? the heck I didn't crouch I just I, I got I got yeeted into the ground okay no crouch just a yeeting just a yeeting Let's see if we can do it again I don't know maybe maybe just kind of like fell briefly down that little ridge there or something I don't know dude I feel like we went I feel like we went pretty far into the ground though honestly I know we talked about it in the last episode. But I'm getting my VR and I'm like so excited. I'm so excited. Apparently there's wireless as well for uh, PC VR setup stuff. You can use like uh, virtual desktop or something like that and uh, stream it wirelessly. I don't know if it would be very good, but at the very least I think it would be like fine to try, you know? Because again, I don't, I don't, I don't have the cable yet, so I, I figure I'll try that before I buy the cable, you know. 
just just because like why buy the cable if I'm actually like completely satisfied with the wireless VR like it's not an expensive cable I think I can use any like USB-C cable as well and I have uh, I have a long one of those that I use for my phone that works fine that I might be able to use it's, it's 3.2 I think so should be fine I think I think you can use any cable the oculus link cable is just USB-C to USB-C with like some fancy stuff on it it's like hundred and ten dollars or something stupid like that Glad I didn't wear my but I, I uh I believe it is just a USB 3.1 or 3.2 so I don't know it's it's just a normal USB-C cable right of, uh, of a specific spec which you can just buy for like 20 bucks or something um, nope so uh, yeah I don't know May as well try the, the wireless and uh, try out using some cables I have lying around the house. Um, Cause like I got a pretty good like setup going for my computer with a lot of uh, cables and like high end data links and stuff like that to, to get uh, my monitors and, and everything kind of going. I don't have Thunderbolt unfortunately, I wish I did, but um, I don't. But you know, don't need Thunderbolt to, to have a, a decent up. Can't get Thunderbolts on uh, on AMD so well yet, unfortunately. It's a, it's an Intel, not exclusive, but like it's an, it's an Intel exclusive. Um, I think they made it, but I, I believe they have only like fairly recently opened it up to be like a public. S get out of here! We've, they've only fairly recently opened it up to be a fairly public spec, rather than um, exclusive to Intel stuff. So we should start seeing it on AMD boards. And AMD laptops, more importantly, in the near future. Hate that. Which is good. But I don't have I don't have USB C on my uh, my computer, so I wouldn't be able to use it without getting like USB A to USB C adapter, which is like just the dumbest thing. Like just get <laughs> a USB A to USB C cable for the Oculus Link or for the Oculus Quest, you know. No reason to, to make it more complicated than it has to be, right? No reason to make it more complicated than it's got to be. I got some new masks as well. I got some really cute masks, actually. While oh, you went shopping the other day. Um, get out of here! got some really cute masks. I'm super excited about them. Well, not excited, but like I'm super happy with them. Um, I got like some Christmassy themed ones. You know, they're like cheap, right? So I don't really care that uh, it's Christmas themed, because it'll be like uh, not 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 necessarily Christmas themed, I guess, but wintry themed, wintry themed. They're very wintry themed, snowflakes and stuff. No Christmassy stuff on it, just uh, identifiably as as winter themed. Although, um, at least in uh, where I live, that's fairly associated with Christmas, which is probably not the right way to do it, but it, it that you know. I don't, I don't think there's too many people out there who are uh, getting upset about people calling winter themed stuff Christmas themes. I think I think you're valid if you are, but I don't think I don't think you exist. I don't think you exist. I declare your existence is false. Mon dame How do you say it? How do you say it? I'm not trying to say Mademoiselle, but uh, there's like the male version of it. I'm talking about it with a friend earlier. It's like Mon Damoiselle. Something like that. Hey! Not cool. Um, Mademoiselle and uh, Mon Damoiselle. They are the. Uh, like my lady, my lord kind of uh, things, I think. I know that Mademoiselle. Mm, no. No, Madame and Monsieur are, are uh, my lady and uh, my lord. Like, Madame is literally, like, my lady. Like, that's that's literally, it's ma and dam, which is my and lady. <laughs> um, Mademoiselle is, uh, no, it's, um, my damsel? Yeah. I believe. I don't know. I'm not good at French stuff, okay? I know how to say it, I know how to read it, sort of. 
I, uh, you want me to, like, translate it? It's not my strong suit, okay? It's not what, it's not what I excel at here. I can, I can normally nail the pronunciation pretty okay when you, when you send me a French word, though, okay? I can normally do it pretty well. Now, will I? No, I'll probably make a fool out of myself and, be like, Monta Moise. And, uh, just, just to be as, uh, insensitive and rude as I possibly can, because that's who I am, okay? Um, but I can normally, I can normally get it, you know? I can't translate it. I understand it, though, you know? It's kind of, it's kind of part and parcel with being in a, in a bilingual country here, where we also speak French. Now, it's only a very small subset of our area that speaks French, but the whole country has to learn how to speak French. Because that one small area is like, uh, yeah, we're gonna speak French, and then uh, everybody else is like, uh, we don't really want to, and they're like, uh, if you don't, we're gonna kill you all. And then we're like, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. Um, which is kind of dumb, but then at the same time, I think that it's it's honestly kind of good because we have uh, a pretty good, uh, I don't know, knowing more languages is never a bad thing, right? Even though, even though French in Canada isn't really the same as French in like the rest of the world, we don't really speak the same French here. We we kind of we butchered it and then forced it on ourselves to have to speak it this way or die. You know, as a, as a kid, as a kid, we were told in. Uh, in classes, in French class, I never paid attention in French class, um, but we were always told in French class anyway that uh, when you're going to get a job, you will be required to speak both English and French. And I was like, well, little do you know, I already have a job, and I don't speak French, so I know you're lying. Nice shot, nice shot. Like, actually, that, that wasn't exactly what I was looking to have happen. So I can't really take credit of it, but um, I, if I knew I could do that, I would have wanted that to happen. Hey! Um, yeah, they wanted us to, to speak French. You know, it was, it was a required thing if you're going to get a job. You know, if you're going to be working at a grocery store, you have to speak at least two languages. It can be, you know, English and Japanese, or English and Chinese. You know, we only teach French here, though, so you better pay attention. You know, kind of like, I don't know, fear-mongering, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> French is definitely not required for a job, I can tell you that much. Is it beneficial? Yeah. Bilingual always looks good on a resume in, uh, in any kind of customer-facing job, because you can help the customers who speak that language more efficiently. Um, I tell you, if you want to work at a seafood department, learn Chinese. Okay, if you're if you're fluent in English and Chinese, and you work in a seafood, and you and you're going to apply for a job, really, I can't afford. Really, do we have like a a weapon around here I can buy and sell or something? Like, really? Uh, if you want a job in uh, in a seafood department, yeah, learn Chinese because you'll get an enormous amount of, uh, of Chinese co uh, customers coming in just because um, Chinese cuisine involves a lot of like uh, seafood typically Go make a, difference. Um, a lot of like crabs and then crab shells and shrimp and clams and oysters and, and all of this kind of stuff right a lot of it And uh, they don't always speak the best uh, English. They don't have to. Okay, they're clearly living their their own lives. They don't have to speak fluent English. They don't have to make me happy. But uh, I, I guarantee you, guarantee you, if you're, if you're fluent in both English and Chinese, your your see your local seafood department would love to love to have you aboard. I worked at a seafood department before, and yeah, it was just it was a ton of Chinese cut people. We have a lot of uh, English-speaking people as well. You know, obviously we're an English-speaking country. The majority of our customers that come in are English. Um, but like other than that, it was it, it was uh, probably I would say 90% uh, English-speaking people, 8% Chinese, and then like 2% the rest of like the world. <laughs> we have people from all over the world, right? Like it's 
We're a very uh, diverse culture here, but primarily English speaking. Um, and yeah, these primarily people who understand English fairly well, because we are a primarily English speaking country, which makes sense. Um, and then whenever there were like uh, any kind of event um, that Chinese people would be celebrating, you know, Chinese New Year or uh, or whatever. Um, those ratios switched pretty quick and it was like 90% Chinese people and uh, like 8% English and 2% uh, everybody else which was uh, was fun. I actually tried, I, well, I didn't try, I thought of learning Chinese while I was there just because uh, we did genuinely have so many Chinese people coming in for for uh, for seafood and I was like yeah like a lot of these people because the thing is is like whenever there's a language barrier like everybody involved feels bad right like you know my Chinese customers feel bad because I can't understand them and I want to help them and I have other things to do and they feel bad because they're taking up my time trying to like work through all this stuff and I feel bad because I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, help them and get them on the way because they have other things to do they're clearly getting a lot of food to make a dinner and they want to make sure that they have thing go things going on and I want to get them the stuff that they want and blah 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 right like everybody involved feels bad because they can't be understood right um so, yeah, I don't know. I I thought that uh, while while I was there, I was like, you know, I might I might start learning some basic Chinese with uh, with regards to the seafood department, just so that when when somebody comes in, I can kind of like help them. We had a few Japanese customers coming in as well. I could I could help them a little bit. Um, you know, you don't need to understand it fluently, right? As long as you understand your numbers, the names of uh, the things you sell, you know. That's that's the important stuff, right? That's the important stuff. As long as you can count, right? Because everybody be like four, and they're like, "Was that four? Was that like, you know, fourteen or four forty? You know, like like these numbers that that can easily be confused. Um, Fifteen and fifty, right? Just uh, it's 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 uh, yeah. I don't know. I th I thought I might want to learn Chinese just because uh. We had so many Chinese customers. Is, is the most anyway. We were told to um, definitely have a second language. wasn't wasn't true. wasn't true. I was told it was a necessary thing to have. That bilingualism was was required, mandated in Canada. Not true. <laughs> anyway, that's gonna do it for today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to see more of the future commentary. If you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.